want to talk about short term and longer term goals and what lies uh, in between. Uh, short term goals, just kind of off the cuff here. What are you guys actually thinking you want to do once you leave this great institution? Do we want to be strength coaches, personal trainers? Uh, just some answers you can just throw it out. Anyone? Strength coach. Okay, for a professional team, for a college? College. College. Anybody want to be a professional strength coach? Okay. Now, why? Why do you want to be a strength coach? I don't know what's that love for sports. Kind of just something that's right to do. Okay, anyone else? You get to, you get to like, kind of deal with like, athletes that are really motivated to work hard and uh, kind of like, more like get to advanced training techniques. Definitely. Anyone else? Team atmosphere. Team atmosphere. And these are all great answers. Now, what about pay? I always get asked, you know, how much do I get per session? What am I going to get paid? You know, show me the money. It's not a highly rewarding job as far as pay goes. But, you know, training a team, training athletes that want to get better, that's the love. You've got to have that love. Um, but on the flip side of things, there is a lot of money to be made out there. Um, I went to Keene State College. I graduated in class of 2000. And everyone kind of laughed at me. I loved the major. I loved the core classes. It was my life. still is my life. But I was money hungry. I want, I'm like, I want to make money in this. And they're like, well, you're just going to do this because you have the love for it and passion. Um, I didn't know anything about New York City. All right, and that's where we're based out of now. All my friends in the major went to Boston. They were doing like corporate wellness, things like that. But I'm like, I wanted more. So I went and I started at um, an Equinox, Equinox uh, Fitness Club. It was a great start for me personally. I met a lot of people. Uh, I love New York City because of the density, um, the variety of the populations that you can train there. So I've trained everyone from five years old, uh, to a high school student, to a college student, to a mother, to a father, to an 80 year old, and professional athletes. So uh, the realm of training uh, in the city, you get to see everyone. Uh, Coach Mike Jock here sees, you know, he has a recess program, uh, after school program, then he trains teams at night, and then he has uh, fitness boot camps during the week, so he pretty much um, does it all. So I want to make money. All right, and I wanted to have that security because I wanted this to be a lifelong uh, job for me. And what I see now is a lot of turnover. People come in, I may hire some people I think are very good, and they see it's not what they want. Uh, I'm looking for like self-starter entrepreneurial types. Uh, and it's a very uh, interesting exercise to start with. I get to hear what everyone has done and what they bring to the table. And I didn't hear anyone say entrepreneurial. All right, let's think about that. How many people have taken business classes here? All right. How many have it as a major or a minor? Excellent. All right. The biggest advantage I've had over anyone who started their own business, I incorporated uh, six years ago. I started E3 Sports with a business partner. All right. I trained at Equinox, and it was actually kind of, I was kind of like surveying the field of uh, who I worked with because I knew uh, if I played my cards right in networks, you know, now it's very easy to network. Back in the early 2000s, it was a little slower, but I had a lot of people coming through the door at Equinox. And I ended up meeting a client who had retired early, sold his last company to, to Bill Gates, and really knew the business side of things. So I'd always brainstorm. All right? I, I love think tanks. This kind of reminds me of a uh, virtual think tank here. And really just brainstorming ideas on, on what you're going to do, how you're going to be better, um, how you're going to make it uh, a career in strength and conditioning. Because it can be done. Um, and I want you to start thinking about the business aspects, uh, the social media aspects of it. Uh, how many people are here on Facebook? Okay. How many people here make money off of Facebook? All right. How do you make money? Uh, well, not directly. Not directly. The business I work for, they do. Excellent. And that's what it really comes down to. I, I saw a stat uh, a couple weeks ago. 1.5 hours of homework done per week for a college student. Social media time, about seven hours. Okay? Now, some people look at social media as a waste of time. And in college, it may be. But as you start to graduate and progress into your field, think about how you can turn that into revenue. It's exciting to think about. Um, to drive traffic back to your own website. Drive traffic back to you. Has anyone heard of Groupon? Okay, Groupon, very good businessman there. You got, you got a bright future ahead of you, all right? Groupon uh, is a social media, social commerce site where you can offer, uh, we had a, a deal for 
three-day trial membership, uh, functional movement screen, and a personal training session for $47. It was a savings of over $270. And you think, wow, big deal. But this thing has really caught on, and we got 45 new clients out, out of that. That now we're training, and now we can possibly turn in to revenue. So as I've progressed in 10 years now in the field, almost 11 professionally, I really love the social media side, the business side. And now Coach Mike Jock loves the social media side too as I start to rub off on him a little bit. But it's good to see. I didn't see this my first year out of college. So I'm kind of, I'm here to address that big gap between when you start, everyone here seems pretty focused like they want to be a strength coach. But now, that gap between you start and 10 years from now and finish, right? You want to be able to have products that make money when you're sleeping. You want to be able to have programs that you have a great staff that you trust. All right, and that, this is my first time really promoting uh, the collegiate level and, and, I guess, educating young minds around me. And I'm really looking forward to it, and I'm very happy to be here today. As you can tell, I'm very enthusiastic about, about this field. But I want to, like, save you time. You know, if you're not in it and you don't love it, definitely get out. Do something else. But it seems like we're all pretty dedicated. We want to be strength coaches, and that means a lot. But uh, to flip it a little bit, are you really a strength coach? Because I think there's a lot more that goes with that. And that's what I really want to show you today. Uh, we could, you know, scroll around on my website. We could go to YouTube. But I really want you to understand the methodology that is behind the E3 Sports program, uh, which I think really differentiates us from anyone else, from your Equinox, from whatever gyms that you work out at. There is science behind it. I love science. All right? There's science behind everything we do. If you're doing an activation or a corrective or a warm-up, there's a purpose behind it. It's to polish up your movement patterns. Okay, that's what we base all of our training and program design on. Movement patterns. Are you moving correctly? All right. And remember, you cannot build strength on dysfunction. And I use this analogy. You know, when you build your dream house on a quagmire or a cranberry bog, no, you lay down the cement, put it in the ground, and build from there. So if you're just going to the gym and you're you're repping out squats, you're repping out chest, all right. I guarantee you've got some dysfunction in there that we could clean up and you'd actually get gains from that. So if I could tell you, you know, let's put you through this tool, the functional movement screen, and learn what your dysfunctions are, learn what your imbalances are, or your asymmetries, and then give you kind of corrective activation stuff to do before your squat, before your bench, before your loaded pulls, okay, and you, you get gains from that, I think that would be pretty valuable information. There's something here for, for everyone, and there's a whole variety of training, and you'll see I have a whole layout for my program design. Uh, in these packets that you have, you'll see we have prehabilitation, okay? We have movement preparation, we have plyometrics, we have movement patterns, we have strength, we have work capacity, we have regeneration. I hope I did those all in order, all right? We have all of those, all right? And it's all about amplitude, how you adjust, where your athlete's coming from. Maybe your athlete just had five games in a tournament on that weekend, and Monday you're doing strength. You think your, your athlete's going to have the energy, wherewithal to actually have a great strength day? No. All right, so let's boost the amplitude uh, in your regeneration work. Maybe they need to foam roll for like 20, 30 minutes. Maybe they do some 3D stretching. All right, and just not being stuck in your little book, in your program. Sometimes I say the best program is no program. If you have an organized approach and you know your athlete, you'll be all right.